Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody here this morning. We're glad you're here. Once again, we uh, welcome our visitors and uh, we'll explain to you uh, our communion procedure if you haven't already been through it. Glad to see you. I hope you keep in track with us on um, Facebook, on um, uh, email, um, on, on uh, texting things like that you know, because we're sending out a lot of information we have Bible classes going on we have uh, um, you know prayer time going on and speaking of prayer time we ask you to continue to send us your requests for prayer uh, we do pray over your prayer requests and uh, then on Wednesday evening at 735 we have a, you know a live zoom or a WebEx meeting uh, for prayer and so that's put on by our president Robert Palmer and it's uh, every Wednesday evening at 735 and if you're interested in that if you're not already a member of that uh, you know just send Robert a, uh, an email and he will send you back the uh, code and the things that you need to put in to get into the web uh, uh, you know the, the evening uh, prayer time so um, I ask you to avail yourself of that too. Um, thank you for continuing to send the offerings in, either by mail or we have the two uh, plates here by the door as you leave, uh, or uh, you know direct deposit by simply giving or text or there's any, a numerous ways that you'll see in your in your worship folder on how to do that. So we thank you for that information. Um, we are uh, going to have a prospective pastor, senior pastor, come visit us. Um, I think it's more of a personal visit that he's coming down here in the next couple weeks. But he wants to uh, meet uh, people here, including the leadership. And so um, we're going to, to meet with him uh, and uh, see, see what develops from that. We haven't called him. Uh, but he is interested in coming here as the senior pastor, and so he would just like to, to know what's going on and to meet people and so forth. So we'll see how that turns out. Of course, we know that everything is in God's hands, and so we rely on him to um, make this happen uh, if he is the one that God has chosen to be here. So um, with that, I think that's all the announcements I have. So let's rise for our processional hymn.
begin this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful God, we openly acknowledge our failure to follow your plans for our lives. We have turned away from you and rebelled against you by going our own way. We have stumbled and fallen in our service to you and have placed our name ahead of yours. We have been a shadow of our love for you and for those who have placed your path. For the sake of the glory and honor of salvation, one for us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us and restore us to the image of the glory of life and love. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was saved, whose blood Spirit. 
I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could not wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praise. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise out of respect for the words and ministry of Jesus Christ. again this morning in the lavish name of Jesus Christ. There was a mother who was pushing her young son in a grocery cart in a locally owned grocery store one day. And as they came up to the cashier, the man behind the counter asked the mother if it would be okay if he offered some candy to the child. Well, the mother said it was okay. And so the cashier took a jar of candy and he held it out to the little boy and encouraged him to take some candy. Well, the little boy just shook his head no. And so the cashier put the jar a little bit closer to the boy and assured him that it was okay. He could get as much candy as he wanted. The little boy continued to shake his head no. The cashier tried one more time. And the little boy said to him, I want you to give me some. Well, the cashier was, was happy at that, and he took some, he got some candy out of the jar and he gave it to the little boy. And the little boy was very appreciative and thanked the man profusely. Well, in the car on the way home, the mother asked her son, why didn't you take the candy out of the jar? Why did you tell the man to give the candy to you? And the little boy said, because, Mama, his hands are bigger than mine. <laughs> ah, smart, smart little boy, eh? right? He knew that the hands at the source were bigger than his, right? And you know, that's a lesson really for all of us. If we would simply let God be God, we would soon discover that his hands are bigger than ours. We see that in our gospel lesson today from Matthew 14, where Jesus provided enough food to fill upwards of 15,000 people um, 
with five small loaves of bread and two fish. Now we all are familiar with that story, aren't we? Jesus was teaching a large number of people in the remote countryside. Matthew, as well as the other Gospels that record this, estimate the, the number of people to be 5,000 men. But we also know that there were women and children there too. So, you know, it might have been as high as 15,000 people. I mean, think about that. That's enough people to overflow the Tucker Civic Center downtown. You see, it was getting late in the day, and the people were hungry. And his disciples were concerned that the people would have to go away so that they could find food for themselves. But what did Jesus say? They don't need to go away. You give them some food. What? They knew that they couldn't get that much food on their own. In other words, their hands were not big enough. So they came up with all kinds of reasons why they couldn't get the food for the people. I mean, after all, they only had a little bit of food left, you know, uh, amongst themselves. Only five loaves and two little fish. Certainly not enough food to feed uh, the multitude of crowd that, that was there. And besides, it would cost a half a year's wages to go out and buy enough food for all of those people. But Jesus told them, to bring him whatever they had. And then he gave thanks for what they did have. And he started breaking the bread and giving it to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the, to the people. And in the end, all the people had their fill to eat. He didn't just give them a little taste of food. He gave them enough to fill them up, up so that they had all that they wanted. And there were 12 baskets left over on top of that. Now that was a great miracle, don't you think? One that the people would remember. Because, you see, Jesus' hands were very big indeed, right? Now, last week we talked about the kingdom of heaven coming near to us with the presence of Jesus on this earth. That miracle that was done by Jesus that we read about in our gospel lesson this morning was a tangible, observable example of God's kingdom here and his, and, and his presence among us. It was an example of what God wants to do for us all the time. Not just a little bit uh, of what he knows we need, but to fill us up to lavish upon us all that we need. He wants us to receive his blessing until we're thoroughly satisfied and there's some left over. But notice that God wants us to participate in the giving, just like he did with the disciples. He wants to work through us to alleviate the need in this world. You know, God, or Jesus could have just snapped his fingers and had food appear in front of the people that were sitting there that day. But he didn't do that. He wanted to show that the people's needs were never too large for him to handle. And he wants us to help him supply what is needed. He wants to take whatever meager amount we're able to give him and make that amount large enough to supply all of the needs of what you know what uh, what what is missing you see with god a little goes a long way because his hands are bigger and he wants us to participate in the distribution of that bigger amount why why does god want our involvement because he wants mankind to share in the kingdom ministry of Jesus. Feeding the hungry is an act of compassion and dem a demonstration of the presence of God's kingdom. You see, we're his children, aren't we? And shouldn't we about be about our father's business? Demonstrating his love for all mankind? 
Now, in our, our gospel lesson today, Jesus had been traveling around, right, showing his love for other people by healing the sick that had been brought to him. But this time, with this miracle, this over-the-top miracle, he wanted mankind's involvement with him. Even today, he wants to accomplish miracles through us. He wants us to have, as they say today, some skin in the game. Because if he did it all for us, all the time, what would we do? We'd just sit back and let him do it, wouldn't we? And his accomplishments and ours would be diminished. In fact, if you go to uh, John's uh, record of this miracle, John's account, you'll see that the people who were fed through this miracle followed Jesus around, wanting him to keep supplying them food. They wanted to make him king so that he could do it all of the time. But they missed the point that Jesus was making in his teachings. That's not why he came to this earth. Because if you read from John's account in chapter 6, Jesus told those followers that were following him around, he said, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. He wanted them to examine their motivation for following him around. He wanted them to believe in him, not just for what he could give them material, but because of who he is and what he could do for them and give them spiritually. Jesus is always interested in providing for the immediate needs of the people with whom he interacts. But he is more interested in their spiritual welfare, in their eternal welfare. And so he used their hunger for physical food to bring their attention to the spiritual food that he would provide. Namely, to have them realize and focus on him as the Messiah that they had been waiting for. He told them, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. But the people who were chasing Jesus said this to him. They said, our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Of course, they were still thinking in terms of physical bread to satisfy their hunger. They wanted to continually have this bread, this food, so that they wouldn't have to live hand to mouth anymore. But Jesus was leading them to thinking about spiritual food that comes from him. Then Jesus said the first of the I am statements that John reported here. Jesus then declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You see that Jesus wanted to lavish on them spiritual food so that they would never hunger, so that they would never thirst. You know, those of us here today might do well to examine our motivation for following Jesus. Is it because of who he is? Or is it because of what material things he might be able to give us? Is it because of his teaching? Is it because of his example of how we're to live? Or is it just because of the free bread? You see, Jesus wants us to get away from our selfish thoughts about everything I have is mine to keep. He wants us to turn our focus on helping him love other people, our fellow human beings. When we give out of what we have, even if what we give is not that much, God is pleased. 
and he will enlarge that gift to satisfy the need. He's teaching us valuable lessons here by strengthening our, our faith in him to provide for us and by enhancing our love for other people. So how do we, how do we participate in his kingdom? Well, first we recognize that there's a need. You know, today we, we see all kinds of stories about the people that are out of work and the food lines of people lined up to get uh, food from like Second Harvest and some other people. And so we know that there, there's a lot of need out there. A need that includes, of course, food. But there's other needs out there, isn't there? A need maybe for some friendship. A need for maybe someone to listen to someone else. Maybe to lend a shoulder to cry on. Something like that. Beyond just material needs. The next thing we should do is offer, you know, kind of say, what can I offer to God to help diminish the need that I've identified? Now, it may not be much. If it's, you know, food, we may be able to supply some food. We may be able to supply some time to go down to hand out that food. We may, you know, it may, it may, may be some time to listen to someone, to actually engage people. Because, you know, with all this distancing that we're going through nowadays, people want to be engaged, right? So there may be opportunities for us to do that. So, you know, it, it, it may not be much that we can offer, but we know that God can multiply whatever it is that we can do. And it's not just to meet the need, you know, just a little taste. God wants to lavish on people what they do need, and he can multiply what we offer him so that he can lavish on people what they need. You know, with God, a little is much. Finally, we are then able to participate with God in his kingdom's work. Because remember his purpose here. To bring us, his creation, closer to the divine nature of God. That's his purpose. God certainly doesn't need us to help him, does he? As if, you know, he can't accomplish it without our help. No, no. God asks us to participate because it will grow our character. It will be good for us. It will grow our spirit and bring us closer to the example that Jesus Christ has set for us. I mean, Jesus is the ultimate example of loving and giving, isn't he? And so if we use Jesus' example to do the things that he did, especially taking care of the needs of the others, it will grow, we will grow to be more like him. That's the goal. Therefore, he knows it's going to be good for us to participate with him in his kingdom, right? That's why he wants to accomplish what he wants to accomplish through us. Certainly God doesn't need our help but he does ask for our help. Why? Because he loves us too. And what a loving God we have. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, hungry and thirsty we come to you, and we pray for you to satisfy us with all the things needed for our body and life, and for our, our eternal salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Though we don't deserve your goodness, still you provide for our body and soul. You are hidden in things simple and ordinary like bread 
and water. But your grace is never anything less than miraculous. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gift. Give thanks to you for all your blessings and serve you in willing obedience. We pray that by faith we may rest our hopes, dreams, anxieties, and needs upon your everlasting arms and find contentment and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy. Here I am. Here I am. Gracious healer, we come to you for healing, comfort, and consolation. Hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in need that your gracious will be done and we all be preserved in a affliction and raised to everlasting life. We especially pray for John Schoon recovering from knee surgery, for Madeline Slappy who is housebound, and for her daughter Karen injured in a fall. We pray for Grace Miller and who has upcoming surgery, and for Jennifer for her upcoming heart surgery. We ask you to bless the continuing treatments of Warren Seeger, Edie Boyd, Paige Palmer, Diana Swayze. We pray for Mike Sharon, Corey Warrington, Tom and Ellie Cooper, Jana Wallen, Jean Blodgett, Nancy, Dorothy Schilling, Kim Donovan, and Kate. We lift up praise to you for Gar's test coming back negative. We pray for those dealing with cancer, Reverend Jerry Collins, Pam, Elizabeth Portello, and especially Teresa Tad Tadlock, who was diagnosed with terminal cancer. Continue to bring comfort to Deborah McClellan and her family upon the death of her mother, Charlotte. Grant them peace, which only can come from you, knowing that she is resting in your arms. We pray for those suffering from the coronavirus and those hospitalized because of it. Please have them recover from it and lessen our fear of the pandemic, knowing that you are our rock and fortress against anything that would disrupt our lives in you. Lord, in your mercy. Here I am. Here I am. Wisdom of the ages. Please bless our call committee and the visit by Pastor Oranger in the weeks to come to talk with the committee and other leaders. Give them all wisdom to understand what is best for Epiphany and whether he might be the one you have already chosen to be our senior pastor. Thank you for being gracious and merciful to us in this interim time and continue to supply all that we need for your church here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us. Hear us. Great I am. We pray for our neighbors living on Hunter's Ridge Trail in our neighborhood of Killarn Lakes. Supply them with whatever they need in their life and show them the benefit of working in your kingdom too. Show us how we can help them and let them be willing to relinquish some of our time. Let us be willing to relinquish some of our time, treasure, and talent to fulfill the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We continue with the public expression of our faith in the triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed <clears throat> in your worship folder. We believe in one God, Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from our Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. On the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was 
was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose daily mercy richly supplies us with all good things, and whose love has accomplished all things needed for our redemption. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. Uh, for those who haven't been here before, what we're going to do is start over here to come up with socially distancing yourselves. Uh, receive the body of Christ. <coughs> Come here, consume it. Come here, receive the blood of Jesus. Come here, and consume it, and then you can put your cups in this receptacle here. Go back to your seat and pray. So we're going to have a kind of rotation this way. So please. <laughs>
you all for being here today. We hope that uh, your week ahead is blessed, and I'm sure it will be by God. And so we ask you to come back again and join us next week and bring some friends. <laughs> so let's leave here with our vision on our hearts and on our lips. With God's help, to make life lifelong committed to followers of Jesus here, there, and everywhere. God bless you all. Thank you.